Hey guys, welcome to today's video. I'm Sarah. This is No BS Beauty. So it's kind of funny because last week I did a video, where are we now, five years from the K-Beauty sunscreen scandal, and where are we now? We're in the middle of another sunscreen scandal. It never ends. So, which I guess makes sense because there's always new brands coming out and uh, new people and new tests and everything like that. So today, uh, we're going to talk about a little brand called Ultraviolet, which actually has become more and more popular. Now they are selling in the U.S. as well, I believe, um, along with Naked Sundays and a lot of other Australian brands. So um, a organization called Choice, which is a uh, independent uh, consumer advocacy group, I would say, in Australia, tested 20 different sunscreens uh, in a lab and in an accredited lab, I should say that, they tested 20 of them and 16 of them failed their promises, which is sad because when you look for sunscreen, Australia is a really uh, important source because they have some of the strongest rays I've ever experienced in my life so far. And uh, you think they would know what they're doing with sunscreens. And uh, it's interesting that some of these brands that were caught up in it were not, I, I didn't see this one coming. So, okay. So the one that did the worst out of all of these, no doubt, was ultraviolet. And this comes down to trust your gut. Something was wrong when they released this product. I'm like, that's a red flag. For a sunscreen brand to, to be releasing something called sunscreen drops that you mix into a moisturizer, that's a red flag. So let me look at the directions. Mix into or layer on top of your preferred daily SPF can be used over the full face for a glow up or to highlight contour. So this product is brown. Um, I am pale, very pale, <laughs> probably from some of my health issues going on, but um, this product probably would not work well on a lot of people. Um, you see how dark it is? It is dark. And when you uh, put it onto your skin, so to get protection, ample protection, you're supposed to be applying so much per square meter of your skin and apply it liberally. So once you apply this liberally, your skin literally, I look like that and it looks ridiculous and terrible. So for me, the only way to actually get protection from this would be, uh, or a glow or to get use out of it, I should say, would be to mix it in with my moisturizer. But are you getting SPF 50 that they advertise when you're mixing with your moisturizer? No, and I don't know, there's, I've seen a couple other brands do this with sunscreens. Uh, Drunk Elephant, per, that's the other one. Uh, they say mix in with your protein or mix in with your lala cream. Well, you're not getting your sunscreen. When you mix it in, everything changes. You are not a chemist. There are trained chemists that make these, and obviously they don't even know what they're doing sometimes. So I don't trust myself. I don't trust you. I don't trust 90% of the population to actually be able to mix this and come out with a proper SPF. So this was a red flag to me when they released this, and I said this is not a good idea. It's not good to mix your sunscreen. It's not good to layer things. Uh, it's not good to mix in with a moisturizer or mix in with a sunscreen. Apply your sunscreen liberally and as the last step in your routine unless you apply makeup over it, which then does change things. But when they release this, I'm like, and they're main, this is a sunscreen brand. Um, these are all different little sunscreens. I own tons of from them. Um, just different sunscreens that they've made. They make it fun. It's cute. Now they're in the U.S., I believe. Um, but it was their lean screen that was one of these somewhere. Lean screen. Is it this one? Uh, that was tested in this. So anyway, so you've got them releasing these different drops, luminizing drops and bronzing drops. Actually, this wasn't the luminizing drops. But anyway, you've got them releasing this to mix in with a sunscreen. So, okay, that's interesting. So they're a sunscreen brand, but they're telling you to mix it in. That doesn't seem smart. So, okay, so there were a few that passed the test. I'm gonna mention these first. Cancer Council Kids Sunscreen SPF 50 passed with a reported SPF of 52. That's awesome. La Roche-Posay Wet Skin Sunscreen SPF 50 passed with a reported SPF of 72, which is amazing. So if you wanna know which ones to buy, um, Mecca Cosmetics to Save Body SPF 50, Hydrating Sunscreen Pass with a Reported SPF of 51. And last but not least, Neutrogena Ultra Sheer Body Lotion SPF Pass with a Reported 56. 
So if you want to know which ones to buy, La Roche Posay sticks out to me, 72. And when we're talking about um, the ultraviolet, they came in with a SPF of five on a reported SPF 50. And I can cut and paste this in the, the list so you can check out which one. So these are the Australian version. So ultraviolet now is uh, in the U.S. So these are not going to be the exact same ones we're talking about probably in the U.S. Actually, the ones in the U.S. probably. I feel like the ones in Australia did this bad. The ones in the U.S. probably didn't do so great either. But anyway, there's no real independent company testing in the U.S., which is... And the tests are expensive to do one test on a sunscreen. I think it, I looked five, five or six years ago and it was between five, seven, eight, ten thousand dollars $10,000 to do different testing on them. So um, I wish we had more. I think Consumer Reports does these occasionally in the U.S. So, um, yeah, so a lot of brands did pretty bad. Banana Boat, Aldi, Bondi Sands, Bondi Sands SPF 50, Zinc Mineral Buy Lotion, uh, calls himself F SPF 50 plus a test at 26. Um, Cancer Council had two that were labeled 50, and one came in at 27, and one came in at 24. Um, Neutrogena had a zinc dry touch sunscreen that was SPF 50 that came in at 24. And then Woolworth sunscreen, which was labeled SPF 50 plus, came in at 27. So these are pretty low scores. Uh, you're still better using sunscreen than nothing, but when you're talking you're thinking you're getting 50 protection, you're putting on five. It's almost like, what's the point? There is a point. You're better off having five than nothing. But when you think you're getting really strong protection. So the interesting thing about all of this is Ultraviolet's reaction to this. So if you subscribe to my newsletter, I did some uh, little kind of opinion piece about it. But um, so all these brands are given three months notice from what I've read that this report was going to come out. So all these brands had three months to prepare for this, and it seems like a lot of brands really have done a good job. Uh, Cancer Council, this is a problem. We don't want this. We're going to fix it. You know what I mean? A lot of brands come hat in hand, you know, you know, we're going to fix this. This is not a good thing. Thank you for doing this testing. We're going to fix this. We want to fix this. We don't like this. Ultraviolet's approach was... Uh, um, Reminded me of uh, a brand, Keep Cool. Do you guys remember this in the uh, K-Beauty sunscreen scandal, the Keep Cool brand? Uh, they came threatening lawsuits everywhere. Instead of apologizing like Purito and Claire's and all these other brands did, they came in and like, this can't be true. We're going to sue you guys. And this is kind of how ultraviolet at this point is coming in. They're like, we don't trust this company or we don't trust this organization. We're going to sue them. Uh, you know, and then they're coming out with all their defenders, which are paid influencers, uh, coming out at people saying how much they still trust the brand and things like this. And they're doing the terrible PR approach. And if, uh, history serves them, uh, if history serves, history repeats itself, if history repeats itself, uh, they will end up where Keep Cool is today, which is non-existent. They don't exist. They went under. Nobody wants a brand that's out there threatening to sue everybody for uh, their mistake. So uh, this is kind of what Ultraviolet has done. They have, uh, they're, they're blasting their te testing methods. Uh, they did an eight minute video uh, defending their brand and ripping on this. In this choice, uh, independent lab, consumer advocacy group, they don't have nothing to gain from this. They don't take money from companies. They're just a small organization that's been around for about 50 or 60 years, probably 70 years now. Uh, and they've, they uh, really have done a lot for independent testing on foods, health, safety, things like this. This is what we need is more testing because when companies bring their products to market, generally they turn in reports and their labs that they pick uh, to have the testing done can do whatever they want. If they're trustworthy or not, I don't know. Maybe some of them are, some of them may not be. Um, but in, instead of apologizing and saying, this is a problem, we're going to fix it, they had three months to come up with this. Instead, they've gone and on, the, uh, on the negative narration and uh, really blaming this, this uh, testing, blaming the testing methods. And they use an accredited lab from what I understand. So, um, yeah, so they really are not looking so good right now. 
I, at this point, if you're using something from ultraviolet, even if it's the U.S. formula or anything, I would be cautious. Be cautious with any sunscreen, especially on this list. But the one thing that this continues to point out to me is um, La Roche-Posay really knows what they're doing with their sunscreen. So, I mean, if it's a hot, sunny day, I I'm picking this one every single day of the week. I I this and Bioderma, they just seem to... And you know what? They haven't been perfect either, but in this test, their one that says SPF 50 plus came in at 72. Uh, it's just, yeah, at this point, just be cautious. And you know what? Honestly, staying in the shade or using umbrella or clothing or whatever is going to be your best protection. Um, I know in some ways sunscreen is looked at as an anti-aging product, which it is, but it's also a healthcare product. I had a friend that had skin cancer, and we do a whole video on this. Um, really scary, and people die from it every single day. And uh, yeah, so it's not just to protect your, your skin from aging, it's to protect your health. So it becomes more important than that. So anyway... Kind of curious all of your thoughts on it um leave your thoughts below and uh, i'll keep you posted on it what else happens with it so uh drama and egos that's where it comes down to so sometimes an apology and being humble works better than being on the uh attack so we'll see and maybe it'll work for him who knows but if history repeats itself they might end up with keep cool which is non-existent who knows so Okay, thanks so much. I'll see you guys more tomorrow.